I will share with you a great trick which will help you to catch many many more fish when using hard lures like minnows, crankbaits, jerkbaits, sliders, various spinners, spoons and so on. The trick is based around a couple of things. First of all you will notice that I have attached my hooks onto the lure via thick braid and it gives me a few advantages right away. First of all, the hook will be able to rotate or spin around the lure at least 360 degrees at least. When split ring is used to attach hook onto the lure, then the hook can move up to 180 degrees. And also you will notice that my hooks are very very close to the lure as well, which is very very important. The next thing you will notice that I'm using hooks which are very very aggressive when it comes to the bend of the hook. Also you will notice that my hooks are fine wire. So when you combine all those things into one, in the end you have a lure which will catch you many many more fish. I can promise you that. So now I will demonstrate you how to achieve similar presentation when it comes to assembling the hooks. Right, before going any further, I will quickly talk about what I will need for this demonstration. So, it will be UV glue, UV torch, a lure which I removed trebles already from and if you don't know how to remove trebles, uh, click on that link in the corner, send hooks to match the lure, a needle, any needle will do really, scissors for trimming off tag ends of braided line and braided line I would recommend to use the one which is at least of 0.25 millimeters in diameter and I quite like to use bright braided lines for this. Okay, I will clean off the desk and will start this demonstration for this Wapa Papa type lure which is about 10 centimeters in length. I will use size 2 hooks from Heurisi. Basically they are super good hooks for this purpose. They are relatively strong, fine wire, very sharp and very very aggressive bent as well. Just perfect. Okay, so obviously I only use barbless hooks all the time so I will debob those ones immediately. That's perfect. Okay, let's put those hooks aside a little bit and the lure as well. So. As I mentioned, you want to use thickish braid and I prefer to use bright braid which would be UV infused as you can see. But for this demonstration I will use a dark braid or black braid so you would be able to see a little bit better instead of this very light and color one. So I will grab about 40 centimeters of this braid. Then I will thread the tag end of that piece of braided line through the eye of the lure, as simple as that. Then I will align those two tag ends and then I will grab a hook and will thread the hook onto those two tag ends starting from the same side where the hook's point is, so from here, not from here but from here, just like that. Then I will slide the hook closer to the eye of the lure and will make sure that those two tag ends kinda are going parallel. There are no like twists. Once I see that all good there, then I will go around with those tag ends so both of those tag ends would end at the front of the hook just like that. And all I have to do now is just to tie a knot very very close to that uh, loop on the lure. And to achieve that I will use the simplest 
of knots really that's a surgeon's knot see I'm going just like that and then I will pass those two tag ends through that loop once and now if I would try to tighten this knot up it would be way too far from the hook and that's no good so to make sure that the knot would not get tight you want to insert a needle in the middle of that knot and start pulling those tag ends and you pull and pull and pull until you can't pull anymore and it means that there aren't any kind of lines remaining slack if you will so and then once you are there once everything is tied you just remove that needle gently from that knot just like that and then you give one final pull to secure the knot and that's it so as you can see we have our hook attached onto the lure and the hook is very very close to the lure itself that's ideal again now you could leave this just like is I mean you could trim off the tag ends leaving maybe a millimeter and you know it would work even though this knot is not the strongest in the world that's for sure probably 30 40 percent of the strength of the braid uh, uh, it's kind of remaining in the braid after you use this knot but still as the braid is very very thick you would be definitely fine when it comes to the strength here but still I like to take one extra step so all I will do now I will grab those tag ends will align with the hook's shank then will grab just one and kind of make sure that it's going parallel with the hook shank and I will make a few turns with another one around the over tag end and the hook three or four to kind of towards the hooks point and then the same amount back and I'll make sure that I will go around the knot as well a couple of times just to make sure that I'm securing it you know and then I will grab another tag end and I will make sure that I will go to the opposite direction than I was going with the first one just to make sure that I will be able to tie a knot properly okay again maybe maybe three times now and now as you can see it really helps to have those long tag ends okay that will do so now, while holding those tag ends, I will give a little pull onto the hook just to make sure that everything is still fine here. Looks bang on. Once I'm there, I will hold that area by the hook where all the wraps are and then I will tie another basic knot again surgeon's knot I guess it's called just this time I will do it double because double allows for that braid to kind of not slip whilst I'm still walking on the on the knot good pull here and we are almost there yeah everything looks bang on yeah so now I will trim off those tag ends very very close to the knot just leaving probably half a mil or so that's it so next step is just to give another pull just to make sure everything is still nice and aligned as you want once I did that I will grab my UV glue 
and will apply on to that area went a little bit overboard but that's fine but yeah you don't want too much but again you don't want to leave any of that braided line kind of exposed to the air and the water as well so now all I will do I will be twisting that hook and the lure just and will allow for gravity to do all the work so that uh, droplet of glue will want to go down all the time so I will change the orientation of the hook and will make sure that UV glue will cover every single millimeter of that braided line and once I can see that everything looks nice and neat I'll grab my UV torch just one final you know adjustment or change of orientation of the hook and then I will apply that UV onto the lure or onto the UV glue should I say around the lure so as you can see I ended up with super neat attachment I mean super neat and super strong now this little area uh, around the hook has all the strengths I mean I did not compromise anywhere really and as you can see my hook can rotate now just let's count okay so that's 360 720 <laughs> and still a little bit more so that's a lot with uh, with the splittering you would not be able to achieve that no way so it means that once you hook a fish it won't come off because the hook will have all the movement you know and that's ideal okay let's do the same with the other one exactly the same steps I will not comment as much just will do it a little bit quicker maybe again about 40 centimeters of that braided line grab that hook and slide it closer we'll make sure that no twists here once it looks nice and in line then I will turn that or those tag ends around the hook simple knot needle goes in I will pull and pull and pull until I'm happy then I will remove the needle gently and slowly and then I will give a pull just to secure the, the knot in place as you can see the hook's eye almost touching the lure side just probably half a millimeter so you will never ever be able to achieve something like that with a with a split ring that's awesome okay so let's put that needle aside a couple of more wraps just to make sure that I'm keeping everything in the shot even though I'm not doing it in the fastest possible way now okay that will do let's grab another one or another tag should I say a couple of uh, wraps with this one not a lot, just three or four. That will do. Okay, let's see if everything still looks okay. And it does. Hook's alignment is correct. All good here. Okay, let's do that final knot here. Again, once, twice. Very good pull good pull here just to double check all is good okay let's trim the tag ends that 
set. We'll get ready my UV torch. Yep, all looks good. Let's apply the glue. Nice little droplet. And I will turn and turn and turn my hook and my lure. Just as I say, to let that gravity do all the work for me. Again, I don't want any of that glue to go above the hook's eye and, you know, affect the softness of that uh, braided line. Or harden it, if you will. Okay, that looks all, all okay, almost. Yep, let's apply the UV light, just to secure everything in place. So yeah, as you can see, all completed. Perfect, really, presentation. And also, when I started using this, I noticed immediately that uh, hooked to landed fish ratio for me went through the roof, you know? I used to land like, let's say, 50% of like, say, chub or trout especially. When I started using this technique, really, it's like, 90 80 percent so and fishing in the same rivers you know so it means that this technique definitely helps at least for me also whilst i have you here i will quickly mention why i prefer bright braided lines see those braided lines bright ones they do have plenty of uv in them and as you can see those little blobs where i used bright braided line they glow quite well and I believe you know that it's uh, an extra attraction to the fish and that attraction is actually onto the hook which is awesome in my opinion. Again this lure has plenty of UV in itself but if you would be using something white or black with no UV and then you have something you know tiny which is UV inf infused if you will then you know odd kind of smart fish just might get fooled you know by something you know like small and bright uh, kind of going next to a bigger chunk which is a lure you know and then they might decide to snatch the lure altogether so yeah this is the reason why I would advise to use bright braided lines for these rigs but it will be it from me for today I hope you'll find this video useful also make sure you try out this technique. As I mentioned, you will catch many, many more fish. I can promise you that. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.